you for uh, joining us on the Alternative Cinema Show. Thank you. Uh, Galen, you mentioned that uh, uh, Nick's character was based on your own life experiences as a journalist. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose uh, a male to lend your experiences to instead of a female character? You know, I just, I, I really identified with Nick and, um, you know, he, he was he was the one who was closest to me. I, I guess I wasn't necessarily thinking wh whether it was a gender thing, male or female. I just uh, I just thought Nick was, I just identified with him really well. It was a way to figure out that character, too, to kind of give him some of my traits. Um, and, I, you know, I had, I had experienced that, that's, that confusion when you lose your job. And, you know, I'd spent... Uh, been laid off and then spent you know about four or five months not knowing if I was going to get another book contract if I was going to be able to to find another job writing and that's all I really know how to do um, and I I loaned that to Nick to that sort of angst of you know thinking that the thing that you wanted to do the most no one was going to let you do and what, and what happens then because Nick's very much kind of regresses you know he, he, he moves back home and hangs around at a bar, which is probably what I would have done. <laughs> Everyone told us marriage is hard work, not for me and Nick. You have drawn from your own experience as a journalist. This film is a section of a marriage. Have you drawn anything from your own marriage? You know, <laughs> that's a very good question. I was tr trying to be pretty careful not to do anything that sp was specific to our marriage, but I did have to be, you know, I wrote it over the course of two years. So I had to be careful if we were, you know, had an argument not to go downstairs and <laughs> I'm going to break this into a scene um, and try to be respectful of that. But I think everyone can certainly recognize certain parts of a, any long-term relationship, like, you know, the kind of little power plays or the little resentments that you let turn into to bigger things. And, um, you know, I gave it to my husband when I had finished writing it before I sent it off and said, uh, you know, mark anything that feels too close to home. And he said, well, it all feels too close to home. That, you know, isn't that the point? <laughs> I thought, then I knew I had a book. Well, you know, you often hear writers uh, complaining about the evisceration of their stories by uh, uh, Hollywood studios. Um, but here, the, the film was quite faithful to the book. How did you achieve that? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I think it's a good lesson that, you know, the, to keep the author involved, you know, the fact that I got to write the screenplay. I knew I couldn't blame anyone else <laughs> for it. And, um, you know, I I had a respect for the differences between a book and a movie. They're very different things. It's a very different different types of writing. Um, and so I had to, my, I felt like my job was to absolutely smash the book apart and then reassemble it as a film and not try to be too precious about certain things, and I think my training as a journalist helped in that. You know, I had, I had 10 years of, um, you know, my 1,000-word story is all of a sudden a 200-word box or something and having to, to rewrite and not, you know, not be precious, kill your darlings, you know, as the, the journalist saying. And so, you know, I think that helped me not be too precious about, you know, trying to keep everything that's in the book. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.